In a previous video, we talked about how we built this circuit in multi-sim live, this A, B, or C. And we also talked about how we same, did the same thing in multi-sim, this A, B, or C. So now what we need to do is build it in on a breadboard or in simulate it in Tinkercad. So this video is going to focus on building that A, B, or C equals F1 circuit on the breadboard. So in a previous, another previous video, we also talked about how to build these input and output circuits. And what I'm going to do is once I've built that, I'm going to go to my Tinkercad and I will, if I click on the gear, I can duplicate that circuit. Once I duplicate it, okay, it's going to do the little line thing, the line dance here. It's going to give me a copy of that four input circuits. If I go back to um, here, notice that I have a copy of the four input. So what I've done is after making the copy of it, I've changed the name to this AOI logic in implementation video because that's what it is. It's a video that we're doing. So let's go to that um, circuit and let's, let's try to build it. So once I've copy and pasted the four input circuit, my template, and then now I've implemented, now I can implement this. So I can build with ICs right on this breadboard, but I think I'll do the more complicated one, which will be to add a breadboard so that this will be my input output circuit breadboard. I can make an input circuit breadboard. I can make an output circuit breadboard, make those two different things. But I'm going to do my implementation um, on a different breadboard. I'm going to switch this from basic to all so I can find the parts I'm looking for. And I'm going to add a breadboard. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose the breadboard. And I'm going to plop it onto here. So I can't just build the circuits on this breadboard and expect them to actually work. So what do I got to do? I've got to jumper my power over from this breadboard to this one. So I'm going to go from here to here for my negative. I'm going to type one for that. And I'm going to jumper here to here for my positive. Okay. And then I always like to jumper to the other side. So I'm going to do that as well. And again, with this one for my ground. And that way I can access power from either end. Remember that this whole row is connected this to black. This whole row is connected to black. This whole row is connected to the red. This whole row is connected to the red, and I've powered it down. So now what do I need? I need my ICs. So I know which ICs I need because I can look on multi-SIM. It'll tell me 74LS08, and I can go or on um, in multi-SIM live. They don't give you that information. Um, but you can also go to a data sheet to figure out what it is you're going to need. Now, one of the other things you're going to notice is that this is 74LS08. In Tinkercad, they don't give us LSs. They give us HCs, which is actually a CMOS device, but um, will work perfectly fine as long as you have the function, correct function number. So let me find it. Here it is. Quad and gate. Now, remember, all I need for this implementation and I'm going to kind of put this oil over here on the left so they have lots of room just in case I need it. But for this implementation, I have one AND gate, one OR gate. So I'm going to need an IC for each one of those. But if I am making a, um, a bigger circuit, remember there's four gates inside of each of these. So unless I have five gates in my implementation, um, in my expression, I only need one. And we'd need two gates if I had more than four. So I don't have that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a wire here and turn that one red because pin 14 is my power. Okay, pin 14 is the power. I know that because it says it on the data sheet. It doesn't show in our simulation because in the simulation it just has the gate that goes it goes to, and it's skipping the simulation. But um, but there it is. But you can see why I like to jumper the power around because now I can access the power from my ICs right quickly with a small wire that stays out of the way. The next move is that's that powers my ICs. Now I got to do the inputs. 
So what am I going to do for inputs? I'm going to put the code in here of what we're going to use because notice that the switch up here is in numbers and I had letters in my in my function over here. So I'm going to back off a little bit or can I move this? There we go. And I'm going to identify um, A as going to equal switch 2. B is going to equal switch 3. And C will equal switch 4. And I'm basically putting that in here so you don't get confused when I'm trying to do A and B. So what are those pin numbers? How do I know which pins to connect to? So if I look at multi-SIM, multi-SIM has these numbers here. Now, those are not there by default. In the default, it's going to have this package pin name with a little black dot in there, and it's not going to show them. So what you need to do is make a check mark in there, and once a check mark is there, then it's going to show what pin numbers they are. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to a data sheet uh, that you can get on the Internet. We've already done that assignment. Um, and then in that data sheet, it'll show you exactly how that is. There's also another video that explains that as well. So if I go to here, so pin 1 is an input. And if I look at my circuit, pin 1 is connected to A. I did the same thing in Multisim Live. Pin 1 is connected to A. So I'm going to come down here, back to my Tinkercad, and take pin 1, and I'm going to connect it to... So here, purple is switch 4, switch 3, switch 2. Um, yep, that's it right there. And then I'm going to turn it to turquoise so I color code and I know where that's coming from. And that will help me troubleshoot if this doesn't work, which already happened once. Now B is going to be switch 3. So I'm going to come over here. Here's 4. 3, and it's blue, so I'm going to change that color to blue. All right. Then it's going to be ORD. I'm not going to go to the same one, but this is the output of that two-input gate. So here's A ended with B. So I've got A wire, B wire. Now the output of this is where is it going? The output of this is going to the input of the OR gate. And then if I look here, the output of this is going to pin 1 of 7432. So I'm going to take this output wire and go to pin 1. I'm going to make this one brown so I know that that's an output into another gate. Then my C is what it's going to be ORed with. So I'm going to come up here. C is purple. So I'm going to tie this to purple. And so that one won't get confused. So pin 2 is C. Pin 1 is the output of A ended with B, which is going to be ORed with C. And this is my OR gate. Now I take this output, and it's going to go to the my output circuit up here, which will be brown. Okay? And that is what's going to drive, turn on this. And this is my driver circuit to turn on my LED. Um, this was a test wire, so I'm going to get that out of the way. I uh, went to my multimeter. I'll show you the multimeter here in just a second. Oops. I like control Z. Okay. And here we are with this. So now I can start to simulate it. Pin 2 is A, so when A is on, it's off. Then B is off. Then both of them on, B and A are on, should turn it on and turn it on the LED. And again, I'm testing every single one of my possibilities. That one should be on. That should be on. That should be on. And that should be on. And then when they're all off, the LED is off. So that worked. So this is how you can, this is how you wire your AOI logic. Okay, so this is this portion of the circuit, the gates in between that you just designed in Multisim and in Multisim Live. And that's how you put the gates together. So hopefully this video helps. And um, if not, make sure uh, you let me know if you need.